Good morning, Spirit Creek. This is the day the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. We shall rejoice in the goodness. We shall rejoice in the greatness. We shall rejoice in the holiness and the righteousness of our God. Come on, lift up some praise in the house for the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. We are grateful and thankful for each and every one of you who have joined us this morning and to those that are on Facebook Live and also YouTube Live and to each and every one of you that are here in person in the sanctuary. We are grateful and thankful to God that he has allowed us to be able to come back in person into the house of worship. Amen. What a blessing that is. We don't take it for granted anymore, do we? Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We come this morning to worship we come this morning to give his name, praise, honor, and glory. Just a couple of announcements. Again, for those that are on Facebook and YouTube Live, I'm the Reverend L.S.A. Gobby Jr., Senior Pastor Teacher of the Historic Spirit Creek Baptist Church, and we do welcome you each and every Sunday to our 11 o'clock a.m. worship service where we are having in-person worship, but we also uh, live stream every single Sunday. Don't forget on Wednesday, 6 o'clock p.m., we also live stream our Bible study. All of those sermons and all of our Bible studies are archived or saved on YouTube Live. So you can access them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. So we have no excuse for forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. So we thank those that are here live. I know there are some that are still not comfortable coming into the church live. I just want to say this. We want you to be comfortable. We're going to be in prayer for you. Uh, but I do want to say it is no more risk to come into the church on Sunday than it is to go to Walmart and Dollar General and everywhere else. <laughs> Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. So I just want to say that to encourage, to encourage someone who has not been coming to in-person worship we do wear our masks, do what is needed and necessary to make yourselves comfortable and safe. We do that as much as possible here. So we thank you for that. Don't forget your giving. If you want to give online or give uh, electronically, you can do that right now via our cash app, dollar sign Spirit Creek Baptist, dollar sign Spirit Creek Baptist. That is our cash app. You can also go to our website, www.spiritcreekbc.com, and there you'll find ways to be able to give through PayPal as well. You can always bring your tithes and offering to the church on Sundays. You can drop it into the baskets as you come into the church. They're found there in the vestibule in the lobby. You can do the same thing at the end of service. If you, got to, if you forgot to drop it when you came in, and you say, Lord, I made a mistake. I forgot to drop my tithes and offering. Then you know what? The Lord always give us another chance. Amen? So you get a chance to do it again at the end of service. So we thank you for your consistent giving. We have a lot of different needs. I'm not going to name all of those this morning. I've named many of them over the past couple of Sundays. But there are many needs still. Uh, and, and we, again, thank you for your giving. Also, don't forget a couple of announcements. Uh, our brotherhood minister, led by our very own associate minister, Reverend Ronald Williams, going to have a meeting on Saturday that's going to be May the 14th, Saturday, May the 14th at 10 o'clock a.m., going to have our first brotherhood meeting since before COVID started. We will be setting an agenda there. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be in prayer for our church and for our men and brothers in the church, also talking a little bit about mentoring for the young men, the young boys that are in the church that may not have a Christian man in their lives. We're going to talk about that on that Saturday. And uh, we're going to have a little something, something to eat for you as well. Amen. Now, don't bring your whole big breakfast appetite, but we're just going to have a little something, something. Amen. Ain't it right, Reverend? We're going to have a little something for you. So uh, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m., May the 14th. All right. Uh, our Minister of Music, Brother Lee Moore, asked me to make an additional announcement for all of the members of the choir and music ministry. Just a very quick, short meeting immediately following service. So as soon as I give the benediction, you all uh, that are members of the music ministry can stay. 
And uh, Brother Lee wants to be with you for just a few minutes after the worship service. All right. Also, as we talked about on last Sunday in regards to our youth worship services that we started up on last Sunday for some. Come on, give God praise for that. We had a wonderful time in the Lord. Wonderful time in the Lord with our young people. And we're going to get our mind ministry, our mind dance ministry started back as well. Amen. And we have none other, our mind ministry leader, Sister Sanquetta Schubert is there. Come on, Sister Sanquetta, wave your hand. Please see Sister Sanquetta. If any of your children are interested, young people, teenagers are interested in being a part of our mind dance ministry, which has just been an outstanding, awesome ministry at the Historic Spirit Creek. We want to get that back going for our young people, so please see Sister Sanquetta Schubert. All right, don't forget, lift up all of our sick and shut in. I know our deacons and deaconesses prayed for them earlier today. There are many. I'm not going to call all of those names today, but the Lord knows who they are, and so we just ask if you would lift and cover them in prayer. All right, I think those are all of the announcements. I ask you to lift up a special prayer for your pastor today. I did something, I don't know if I've ever done this in 15 years of preaching, uh, but my wife was with me. I left my sermon at home. The written part, but the sermon is in me. <laughs> Amen? So I really didn't leave it at home. I guess God, God got something else specifically that he wants to say, and I just ask and solicit your prayers. One, it's going to be a little bit off sometime for the AV ministry because I may not give the scriptures in the order that I gave it to them before. However, we're going to be submitted to the Holy Spirit, and we do have a word from the Lord for you on today. Also, don't forget, what, second Sunday is Mother's Day, right? Amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for the mothers. Amen. Mothers, grandmothers. All right, so... Second Sunday, second Sunday, I almost forgot, amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that back to my remembrance. All right, we're going to have a special message for us on second Sunday uh, regarding our mothers, talking about a godly mother, amen, what it means to be a godly mother. So we look forward to that particular sermon. And then I just remembered another announcement. Our very own associate minister, Evangelist Jones, will start up our new members' disciple orientation classes. That's going to start next Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. That's going to be in the fellowship side hall of the church, okay? And anybody that has joined the church since March of 2020, because we haven't done it since then, we want you to come in and get these four new disciple orientation classes. Those new disciple orientation classes are going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to introduce you to what you committed yourself to. So it's going to tell you about the kingdom of God, what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. Those uh, uh, orientation messages also will tell you what it means to be under the authority of the church and to be a member of the local church and what our obligations are. It's going to tell you what it means to tithe, to offer, and give a sacrificial giving. It's going to tell you what it means to be saved. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today as well. It's going to tell you more about me personally as a pastor. It's also going to tell you about all of the different ministries of this great church. And so please, sir, please, ma'am, if you have joined the church between March of 2020 and up until today, then please get all four of those classes, 10 o'clock each Sunday they'll be taught in the fellowship hall by Evangelist Jones and also Reverend Williams will be rotating with her as well. Okay, I think those are all of the announcements. Y'all ready for the preach word? Yeah. Lord knows I'm ready to preach it. Amen. Let's give him praise and honor and glory. We thank you again for your attendance. All right, music ministry. After that, yours truly will come back with the preach word. Thank you.
let the words of my mouth and let the meditation of my heart. Lord, let it prove now to be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength. Lord, you are indeed our Redeemer. For these and all blessings we ask in the mighty and precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let every heart say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen, Amen. Congratulations again to all of those that were baptized on this morning. We thank God once again for adding to the church daily such as should be saved. We don't take it for granted that you chose to come and be a part of the historic Spirit Creek Baptist Church. Always good to see my mother here with us. I see my cousin is here this morning too, Stephanie. God bless you all. Glad that you're in the house with us on today. And then also I meant to acknowledge any visitors that we have with us for the first time. If you're visiting with us for the first time, would you raise your hand? Are there any visitors for the first time? All right, glory to God. Amen. God bless you, my brother and my sister. We thank you for coming out to the house. We call it the house of hope. This is the place of prayer. We thank you for being with us on today. There is a word from the Lord, and I tell you, I am just as anxious as you are to hear what God has to say. I was wondering why God was still giving me the sermon as I was driving on the way in. And so uh, we are going to be led by the Holy Spirit and go where God tells us to go. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, beginning at verse number 3 through 5. We're going to read it this time from the King James Version. Last week we read it from the NIV. But today we're going to read it from the King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter. 10. Beginning at verse number 3. Holy word of our God reads this way. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of of Christ. That's enough, my brothers and sisters. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the time that I was together to share on this morning, I want to preach, but I really want to slow down and teach on this morning from this thought, from this subject, the battle for your mind, part two. The battle for your mind, part two. My brothers and sisters, when it comes to living the good life, the great life, the abundant life, which is found in the book of John, chapter 10, in verse number 10, John refers there to the enemy And he says that the thief, which is one of the names for the devil, he comes to kill. He comes to what? Steal. Come on, help me. And then he comes what? To destroy. And then Jesus comes back. And remember, essentially, there's an invisible conjunction there, but. But essentially, Jesus comes back and says, but I am come that they might, go back to verse 10, that they might have life and they might have it what? More abundantly. 
So can we be in agreement that Jesus wants and expects us to have the abundant life? Jesus went on further to say in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. And no man comes to the Father, how? But by me. So he lets us know that he wants us to have the abundant life, but then he is the truth and he is the life. And so in order for us to get proper direction for our lives, we have to submit our will to God's will. And we have to allow access to our mind to the things of God. Am I making it plain so far? So here's the thing about outcomes in life. Whatever your life is right now, it is based upon your thinking. I shared with us on last Sunday that the enemy, the, the Beelzebub, the devil, he's also referred to as the prince of the air. I'm going to show that to you in scripture in just a second. Uh, he has two main agendas that he works on. Number one, he wants our soul. He wants our soul. Now, in Scripture, there are many references where spirit and soul are interchangeably. However, there are other areas where spirit and soul are different. So let me teach that for just a second. Okay, uh, AV Ministry. I need you to go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust. The, the dust of the ground essentially means that it was of nothing that was of importance. Uh, what can you do with dust? But God did something with it. <laughs> Dust, you can't do them but wipe it off and throw it out, right? But God said, I'm going to take not the dirt. I'm going to take what? The dust. You, you waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. <laughs> the, the dust of the ground. And, and, and he did something that was miraculous. He said he took the dust, he formed it, and then he breathed. Okay, we got to stop right there. Okay, now, in the Hebrew, the word breathe is ruah, ruah, R-U-A-C-H, in the Hebrew, ruah. In the Greek, it is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. God says, from the Old Testament, I'm going to take the Ruah. New Testament has not been created at this particular time. However, remember, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit was already in existence. Why? Because he said, let us do what? Make man. If it was only God, why did he say, let us make man? He was talking to the Trinity. He was saying, I, God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit are all going to come together to make man. So he says the Ruah in the Hebrew Old Testament, but also the Numa, because I'm talking about Jesus from the New Testament. Am I making it plain? So, he says, I'm going to breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and then man became what? A living soul. Now, let me give you the other definition of soul. You're going to learn a lot today, amen? Your soul, con your, your, your soul is made up of a couple of things. 
Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. Let me give it to you again. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. Breath also in the Latin means spirit. What separates man, human man, from animals is the spirit. Animals have a soul, but they do not have a spirit. Spirit was only breathed into man by God's ordination as he created man. He said, I'm going to breathe into man. And when he breathes life, he breathes breath, he breathes spirit into man. Then man became a living soul. Now, animals also have a soul, but they don't have spirit. Nowhere in scripture will you find that God breathed himself into an animal. All the animals were created. They were made. But not spirit. All right. Can I make it plain? We raise cattle and goats. Now, if one of them 2,000 pound black Angus bulls decide that he wants to go through the fence, guess what? He going through it. He done made up his mind that he going through that fence. So he not only has a mind, but he got a will. Because he's saying, look, uh, I don't care because you pass a guy. I'm a 2,000 pound black Angus bull. I have made up my mind. I don't want to go that way. I'm going this way. So you also know he got a will. Not only does he have a will, he's also smart enough to know that he can go through it. So he also has an intellect. He also has emotions because now he's angry. I'm just trying to make it plain. So, the devil wants two things. After he realizes he cannot get your soul because you're saved. Okay. AV ministry, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Let me teach right there for just a second. It says, wherein time passed, Ye or you walked according to the course of this world, meaning before your before Christ days. Before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, our mind was not guided by the things of God. That's why we did such crazy stuff. And you look back on your life now and you say, what was I thinking? You weren't thinking. You were being influenced by the enemy and demonic forces. But once you give your life to Christ... All right, because remember I told you that uh, a third of the angels fell with Satan. And they became the prince of the power, what, of the air. Prince is actually demonic forces. And Satan himself is the chief angel of the air. He's invisible now. You can't see him. He's spirit. And he worketh in who? The children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? People that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are going against the grain. They're in a spirit of disobedience. Their mind is influenced by demonic forces and the devil. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. And verse number 12. 
There are at least, I'm not going to say this is all of them, there are at least four different types of demonic forces. Paul says here in Ephesians 6 and verse 12, for we, he's talking about believers, wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, meaning your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, your neighbor, your co-worker, your church member is not your real enemy. The real enemy for all of us is the devil himself. He says, so we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle what we can see. As believers, we wrestle what we can't see. And therefore, because we cannot see it, you can't fight what you can't see. Spirit is invisible, lowercase s. Therefore, we need capital S, Holy Spirit, to fight lowercase spirit. Am I making it plain? Now, let me give you those four things. He said we fight against principalities. I shared that with you last Sunday. That's one, prince of the air. I just showed you that, didn't I? So we fight against principalities. That's one. We also fight against powers. Powers are people that do things like they're in a government position, they're in an elected position, and because of their elected position, they get kicked back on contracts. So here you are, you got an African-American business, and you can't seem to get a contract. You know why you can't get a contract? Because you got powers in place that are blocking. Let me go another way with it. They, 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 they're in political positions, so they redline the districts. Meaning, they take the makeup of the district in terms of nationality and origin and race, and they draw the lines in a way that favors them so they can get elected. So you, we, we have powers. So that's two, right? Not only do you have principalities, not only do you have powers to fight, but also against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, I know sometimes there are some people that get upset with me being the pastor, and they say, you know, why we can't celebrate Halloween? We don't celebrate Halloween because it's not a Christian holiday. And we might think it's cute because people going around getting candy Okay, and putting it into bags and all this different stuff. But guess what? The rulers of the darkness of this world, they take it serious. This is one of the time periods where the demonic forces are active. And they're out and about seeking what? Whom they may devour. So that's why we don't celebrate Halloween in this place. This place is dedicated to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know what? I don't care who it is. I don't care who cares or who don't. I'm telling you now, as long as I'm the pastor, we're not going to celebrate that in here. It's a whole nother sermon. That's why we don't Easter egg hunt. It's paganism. I know you think it's cute and you think it's okay. But guess what? Those that are of the rulers of the darkness of this world, they want to introduce your mind. They want to introduce your mind to things that are of the darkness of this world, things that are not true. Now, this is me. I say, this is me. This is Pastor Gabi and Sister Gabi teaching their children. This is me. My children never believed in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. I lost some of y'all right then, see? You know why? 
teach children the truth. Teach them the truth of the Bible. If you tell them that Santa Claus existed and they've never seen him, and then they find out it ain't true, what you think they're going to think about a God who they've never seen? We got to teach the Bible. See, people's mind is being influenced by everything else except the Bible. Let me go this way with it. The Ford Motor Company made the F-150 Ford truck and the engine of the truck and other automobiles. When you get a brand new car or a brand new truck, when you look into the glove compartment, what do you find in there? Instructions, right? You find an owner's manual. Now, you can decide, you know what? I'm going to put whatever type of gas I want to put in this truck. I'm going to put whatever type of oil I want to put in here. I'm going to change the oil when I get ready. Guess what? Your engine will not run efficiently unless you follow the rules and regulations and instructions that the Ford Motor Company who created the engine. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? God is the same way. God is saying, if you want abundant life, you want a right life, you want good living, you want great living, you want to live a holy life, then come to me. I'm the creator of your mind, body, and soul. Come to me, and I give you instructions. That's what the Bible really, biblical instructions before leaving earth. Come to me, and then I will protect your mind. Protect your mind. Meditate on the word of God, what? Day and night. It'll protect your mind. Let me go a little bit further. Are you learning something? So, once the devil loses the battle for your soul when you get saved because there's nothing else he can do in terms of messing with your soul because your soul is now protected and you're sealed. Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 1 and it's verse... What did I give you? Verse 13? Okay. Hold on. I'll give it to you. Yes. Ephesians 1, verse 13. Here Paul writes... In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. Meaning, you heard the word of God taught. It was explained to you. You felt by the power of the Holy Spirit that God was drawing you. So, you submitted your will to his will, and you trusted him. You believed. That's what Romans 10, 9 tells us, right? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God did what? Raise him from the dead. Then the Bible says what? Thou shalt be saved. So we're saved, right? After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel or the good news of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, after you believed, then what? You were what? Sealed. My grandmother taught me some good theology about being sealed. She used to let me and my brother come into the kitchen with her, and there she would be canning vegetables and fruits. And she used to have those mason jars. Come on, older folks, come on, help me. She had the mason jars. 
And those mason jars had a cap, little rubber cap, right? And, and, and you would take that little rubber cap and put on top. Then you would have another top that would be open. And you put that on top of the rubber top, amen? And then you twist it. And then she would drop it in the hot water and it'll be sealed. Once it was sealed, nothing could get out, and what? Nothing could come in. And grandmama would then put those mason jars on the shelf in a cool place, and they would keep. Somebody missed it. But we have been kept by the power of the Holy Spirit until the day of promise or the day of redemption. That's why I told you last Sunday, once you are saved, you are sealed. Jesus said, no man can pluck them out of my hand and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. You are sealed to the day of redemption. The devil cannot do anything to you. The only thing the devil can do is oppress you and the reason why he is oppressing you is because you're not exercising the power and authority in the Holy Spirit that God has given you. You can tell that devil, get out of my life. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my family. Get off my job. Get out of my boss. Get out of the church. You can kick him out. We have authority. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. The victory is already won. The devil is a defeated foe. You don't have to let him into your mind. Don't give him access to your mind. He's taking up free space in your mind. You letting that joker stay in your mind and take up space and he ain't even paying rent. Get him out of your mind. Get him out of your mind. We give too much authority to the devil. Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3, Paul said, we do not war after the flesh because the war that the devil is raging is in our minds. See, what makes us an effective Christian or makes you an oppressed Christian is dependent upon what is going on in your mind. The battleground is the mind. That's why you got to be careful what you read. You got to be careful what you look at on television. You got to be careful what type of music you listen to because all of these are entry points that we're giving the devil access to our mind. I, I can be in the pulpit ready to preach and teach God's word. Prayed up, read up, studied up. And I can sit there and that enemy will bring up some music from 40 years ago. Can I be real? I mean, am I the only one? You can be on your knees praying and the enemy will bring up some foolishness from 40 years ago. And I could be sitting here in the pulpit thinking about when I was at the hop when I was in high school, when I was 14, 15 years old. I know I'm the only one. I know. Paul says, he, 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 he go, let me go back. Let me, let me go back to 2 Corinthians. Let me go back to my text. He comes, Paul comes back. And he says in 2 Corinthians 10, Paul says in verse 5, 
bringing into captivity. How many thoughts? Every thought to what? The obedience of who? Christ. You see the authority you have? Now, one of the amazing things that God has done for us is that you cannot think two thoughts at the same time. You know, the principle that two things cannot occupy the, the same space at the same time, we think that's a scientific rule. That was No, that's God's rule. So, you cannot think bad thoughts and think good thoughts all at the same time. So, if you want your spirit man, Holy Spirit man, a woman, to rule over your flesh, you got to put more in your spirit than you do in your flesh. There was a man, he had two dogs. They was pit bulldogs. And he would fight those dogs. And he would bet on those dogs which one was going to win. He made a lot of money doing it. He had a black dog and he had a white bulldog. And he was beating everybody, taking people money. Finally, one man, he got so frustrated, he had lost so much money, he went to the man. He said, please tell me now, how is it that you know which dog is going to win? And the man said, okay, I'm going to tell you. He said, if I want the black dog to win, I feed the black dog and I starve the white dog. He said, if I want the white dog to win, I feed the white dog and I starve the black dog. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? If you want your spirit man to me, then you better feed your spirit and then you got to starve the flesh. But if you feed the flesh and you starve the spirit, then the flesh is going to overtake the spirit. But if you want it to be the other way around, keep reading, keep studying, keep coming to Bible study, keep listening to the word of God, keep putting it in. The battle is in your mind. Tell somebody next to you, it's in your mind. Let me come to a close. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 27. I want to give you just a couple of quick solutions. A couple of quick solutions. One of the first things you want to do is to protect your mind is don't give the devil place. That means don't give him an opportunity. See, you didn't lose the battle when you got in the bed with that person that you weren't married to. You didn't lose the battle then. You lost the battle when you picked up the phone and called them. Don't give him place. Don't give him access. You know you like that person. Why are you calling them after 11 o'clock? When I was growing up, that's what you call a? I knew you hadn't been holy all your life. <laughs> y'all so holy. Y'all so holy. I told y'all that Jesus I preach about it's one I know because he picked me up, changed my life, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground. I wasn't always living. I wasn't always in the pulpit. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus is real to me. He changed my mind. He changed my thinking. See, it ain't that I can't sneak to the club like some of y'all do. I don't want to go because he changed my mind. He changed my thinking. Oh, you hear what I'm saying?
I'm coming to a close. Paul says, neither give place to the devil. Don't even give him opportunity. You know if that marijuana make you do stuff that you normally don't do, don't bring it in the house. Don't go buy it. Leave that alcohol alone. You know that once you get a little bit inebriated, you do things that you normally would not do because alcohol lowers your inhibitions. You already know you like him and he like you. Why y'all going? You... <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody, amen? Let me go forward. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. You, I, I'm going to close on the scripture. Let me go back. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from our text, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The battle is in our mind. You got it? Four. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly. Your battle is not with physical things. Your battle is with spiritual things. I gave you four different types of demonic forces. You got those? All right. He comes in verse 5. Last thing. He says, casting down imaginations. Imaginations are fantasies. See, Affairs don't start because you got together with somebody who you shouldn't have been with. That ain't where affairs start. Affairs start in the mind. When you start thinking about things that you don't need to be thinking about. Because you got that at home already. But what the enemy does, he works off of our deficiencies. So when you lost weight and you was looking good and you got your hair done and now your husband didn't notice it, he didn't say anything, now here come that joker on your job who don't mean you no good, but he come up to my girl, you look like you done lost some weight. You got your hair done? Let me give you a little money so you can get that done again. The enemy works off of our deficiencies. So don't go after the 80, don't go, don't lose the 80% going after the 20%. He said, casting down imaginations and every high thing, high things are petitions. These are things that are blocking the knowledge of God. You got to stay with his word. Everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, Paul said, bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. The battle is in your mind. But the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. You got to stay with his word. You got to keep reading, keep studying, keep learning until you get understanding. When you get understanding, you can apply it to your life. If you got the right thing in your mind, the right thing will come out of your behavior. Because as Christians, we don't work from the outside in. We work from the inside out. Stand with me for the invitation. Did you learn something? Come on, give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory.
If there's one here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment and this is your time when you can give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 13, whosoever, that's anybody, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's anybody. If you want to give your life to Christ and you want to become a part of God's church, just step out on faith. Come down and give me your hand and give God your heart. If there's one here today who needs to make that decision, this is your moment in time when you can make that decision. It's very simple. We're just going to pray a very straightforward, simple prayer with you. God has told us it is not the will of God that any should perish. For some of us right now, this may seem like an invitation, but it could be a warning. We never know if we're going to get back to this place. Yesterday is already gone. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. All we have is this moment in time right now. If there's somebody who needs to give their life to Jesus Christ, you want him to be your Lord or you want him to be your Savior, you can do that right now. It is my prayer that everyone under the sound of my voice is saved. But maybe you need a church home. If you need a place where you can grow, if you need a place where you have a pastor and you have associate ministers who love and care and will call and check on you and pray with you, if you want a pastor who's dedicated to your spiritual growth, who will stand flat-footed, preach and teach God's word, no chucking and jiving, no playing around, no messing around. If you want a pastor who is a man of integrity, you want a pastor who ain't focused on getting money and fleecing the flock and messing around on the wife and different crazy stuff like that. If you want that type of pastor, I want to be your pastor because I'm that type of man. I'm not perfect by any means, but I promise you, I live what I teach and preach. You ask my wife, you ask my children. You ask my mother. If there's somebody here today, you want to be a part of the historic Spirit Creek Baptist Church. This is your moment. This is your time. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now. He's talking to you. He wants you. He's begging you. Come on, be a part of the church. Come on. As old folks would say, come on, give your life to the Lord while you have time. Come on on the Lord's side while you still have time. If there's another, if you want to give your life to the Lord. Final call. Final call. If there's anybody who needs to come for any reason, if you need to come and give your life to the Lord, Right. Let's thank God for what he's done. All right, church. This is Mother Lottie Maxwell. She's already a member of the church. Amen. And we're just going to pray for Mother Lottie. Would you bow with me? God, we bless your name and we thank you for Mother Lottie Maxwell. Thank you, God, for watching over her and protecting her and bringing her out to the house of worship one more time. God, we pray now that you continue to give her that assurance, continue to give her that knowledge and wisdom and revelation and understanding. Continue to watch over her, guide her, lead her, order her steps, and continue to protect her, Father. We thank you now, God. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Let our hearts say together, amen, amen. All right, God bless you, mother. We love you. We love you, too. Amen. All right, don't forget music ministry. Minister of Music, Brother Lee Moore wants to see you immediately following service. Don't forget May 10th, May 14th. It'll be 10 o'clock a.m. for the Brotherhood Ministry Meeting. And may you have a blessed week. Don't forget Bible study this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Oh, I got to give our baptism, uh, those that were baptized this morning, I got to give them their gifts and their, bap their certificate of baptism. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Certificate of baptism. This certifies that Sister Jasmine Holiday is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
at the historic Spirit Creek Baptist Church the first day of May 2022. God bless you, my sister. Welcome to the creek. All right. All right. Certificate of baptism. This certifies that Brother Jesse Harris II was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit on the first day of May 2022 at the historic Spirit Creek Baptist Church. God bless you, my brother. Welcome. All right. Certificate of full membership to Mother Cora Bullock Kelly. Amen. Glory to God. All right. God bless you, Mother. All right. God bless you. All right. Certificate of membership to Sister Tandria Robinson. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, my sister. Welcome to the creek. Amen. All right. Thank you. Let's thank God for what he's done. Amen. All right. Will you stand with me for the benediction? Thank you for your prayers. Okay. You can begin to file out from the rear of the church. Those that are in the choir, you can stay in the sanctuary. Don't forget your tithes and offering. You can drop your tithes and offering at the rear of the church. and his mercy keep us, hold us, and sustain us in every good and perfect way. Now, Father, dismiss us from this place, but never from your divine presence. Bring us back together again to worship you in spirit and in truth. And all God's people said it together threefold. Keep you. 